ABSA Asset Management Private Clients offers individuals with over 1 million rand to invest the opportunity to build wealth through long-term returns in portfolios tailored to each investor. The fund already has over 6 billion rands of private client funds under management. Craig Pfeiffer, General Manager at ABSA Investments, joins us in studio to share their investment strategy in light of the challenges facing the financial markets and challenges it is. There are plenty. There are, there are plenty, <laughs> not is. Uh, where, do, where do we start with the challenges? Well, I think maybe you could start at the end, uh, and that is that whatever your strategy is, and uh, you, you need to, to set up a strategy, each individual needs their own investment strategy. But I think the, the underlying message is that you've just got to stick to your guns and <coughs> uh, stick to what that strategy is. There's news that hits you every day, every minute, we get U.S. jobs data, we get Greek elections, we get Spanish bond yields go up, we have ratings agencies that come out with stories. It's, there's a whole wall of worry out there at the moment. Um, but you know, with all that whole wall of worry, we're still making new highs on the, on the, on the market. Um, so the market doesn't great. want to believe the worry. Is that what we're saying here? I we, think we're the market's got, got a bit of a hard skin at the moment. And if you look at uh, things like the volatility, the... It's the, very the it's come right off, and uh, and it's actually following the volatility of global markets as well. The, our savvy index is exactly looks exactly the same picture as the VIX, the South African, yeah. volatility, the South African volatility, index. volatility index, and it's at a low, it's at a quite a low point. So we've become quite hardened to all of this, all of this news. And uh, well, you yeah. have, Wayne. You you certainly hardened no, well, look, to look, all look, of this I, news. I, 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 my, if you'd like to call it, crusade over the last six months, maybe even longer trying to persuade people not to be overly pessimistic, but clearly not to be optimistic. But a question specifically for Craig. If we assume that half the people in the world have a below average intelligence, okay, and if we assume that even if people with above one million rand to invest, over half of them will also have a below average intelligence and half will have an above average intelligence, how do you stop people from panicking, i.e., how do you get them to stick to their plan? Because it's easy to draw up a financial plan when things are good. Mm. But when things turn a bit south, people forget the plan. Now, Wayne, I've been in the markets for a long time, and I've got my same little letter that I put in the bottom drawer. And every few years, you've got to pull it out and say, dear clients, and the bottom line is, don't panic. I always yeah. use that hitchhiker's guide to the galaxy kind of analogy. On outside on, the, on, the, on that book are the big words, don't panic. And you have to... You have to really educate clients from time to time. But I think a lot of those clients that do have a million rand or more to invest are quite savvy and, uh, and they know and you have to give them that expectation at the beginning that if you want to grow wealth over the longer term, you have to be in risky assets and risky assets in the short term are the most volatile. And you have to just sit out all of this noise that we do get from time to time. I want to pick up on a discussion we were having earlier. So we've had Sid work focusing on retail stocks. We were chatting earlier about Anglo-American and BHP and the potential opportunity that lies in those stocks from an investment perspective. How do you feel about those two sectors? So resources right now versus the retailers that are all looking, can we say, top heavy? They are, a lot of them, and I agree with Sid a bit as well. You know, if you're in them, you've got to stick with them. And in our portfolios, we've got Mr. Price, Woolworths, ShopRite as well. And boy, you don't want to sell them. I think the prospects are still quite good. And yes, on a PE valuation, they do look expensive. Is there a new normal that maybe with foreigners investing in the market, uh, we, uh, you know, we, we should get used to a little higher PEs, or is it just a bubble? I think the prospects are still quite good, and we're going to stick with, with those ones in particular. But we do like the resources side of the market. It has been knocked quite substantially. The outlook on global growth seems to weaken by the day. Uh, but I think we factored in much lower commodity prices into the, into the share prices at the moment. And at these low PEs, I think you can't go wrong if you're taking a longer term. So trip. accumulating, and let's uh, speak specifically <coughs> about the diversifiers, BHP, Anglos, do you have a preference? Would you be exposed to both? I like them both. It gives you even added diversification. Uh, on the single stock side, I probably like something like Exaro. We've talked about Sassol here before yeah. as well. Um, those are the shares you want to get. Kumba we like, but I think it's, it's look, it's, it is expensive, but it's a great dividend yield play as well. But I, I, I like the exposure more in, the, in those diversifiers. And when you mentioned the platinum shares. Yeah, look, I mean, I must say we've been sitting and agonizing over <coughs> this internally. <laughs> These shares have fallen from 40, talk about... Um, uh, 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 Impala specifically has fallen from 30 or 40 PE to 11. You know, 
the platinum sector is starting to close production because the prices aren't high enough to sustain that. They're starting to stop And we know stop supply investment. is going to be constrained. That's yeah. what's happening here. And this is a very unique commodity because there's limited supply and there's nothing above the ground. There's no stockpiles. But we also know that there's going to be a deficit for the next two years. So what do you do? Do you buy it or do you sit and wait? Come, Craig, we want the answers Well, here. we had in Platt, so we sold it, uh, I think, towards the end of, end of last year. So we held on to it for too long. Yeah. So I'll, I'll admit to that. But, you know, we could have held on a bit longer and, it, and it, you know, we, we switched it out into, you know, into other opportunities in the market and we've, we've done relatively better. So we have taken that decision and we've also thought we'll get our exposure via Anglos Anglos, into Anglo. Yeah. So you're not going to go in the platinum route? And we're not. Now. And I think it, they, they still look, we need to see the earnings coming through. And I, I like the story on a longer term view, but I think we've got time to, to wait there still. We've seen... Lonman closing um, or Anglo Plate closing, Marikana, and there's probably going to be more there's of that more cleansing that coming, yeah. that's going to come and closure, but it, it isn't really impacting on prices yet. And I think at the moment, probably this year, still, there's still an oversupply on the platinum yes, side. Yes, there's oversupply. Um, so. well, Palladium think, uh, might be an undersupply, but, but yeah, palladium, look, uh, platinum oversupply. When you look at the European market, the amount of motor car, the, the fall in motor car production there is roughly equal in, if you convert that to catalytic converters and you convert the catalytic converters to ounces. It's about 250,000 ounces less demand, but so far about 250,000 ounces of production has been closed down. So the market, even though it is looking a little bit better, there is still going to be an oversupply. But one thing we know for sure, at the current RAND price, RAND price of platinum, no one's really making any decent money and there's going to be no more future expansion. So if Europe picks up a little bit and China goes a little bit better, platinum stocks will be re aggressively. You would, you would think so, but you could, you, you, you could have thought so with the shares 15% higher. That's a problem. Yeah. We were also talking about the risk on risk off trade. So with the RAND coming in at 8.19 today, clearly risk on is starting to come back into the system. Is that what's happening here? Well, it looks like it for, for the moment. Um, and we've had the recent news. Greece have sorted out their problems for the moment, but all we've done is taken the Greek folder and put it behind our pile of other European folders, and yep. Spain's on the top now, for now. Um, so those worries aren't going away um, any time We're going to be soon. chatting about it till the end of this year and oh, into next year and next year. Gonna gonna I, I keep boredom, yeah. reminding people that even if Greece sorts everything out, they pay back all the debt and everything works out, fantastically well according to plan by 2020 they still only get to 120 percent debt to gdp mm. they've really just well, haven't solved it. their long-term problems yet just and kicking so the can down the road we're going to start using that oh, terminology. Oh, we, haven't, we, haven't we haven't used, used that, that term terminology for a long time, for a long time. Oh, right, i think oh, we, we should have. bring back green Let's shoots first uh, yeah, yeah. green <laughs> shoots of course yeah. that's completely disappeared look, from our verbiage look, greece has never if 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 the european union consisted of germany and greece no one would have worried about greece leaving the euro they're only worried about can Spain and Italy become a Greece. That's the actual worry. And quite well, frankly, it could certainly be a risks, reality. No, I, I think Italy's got problems, Spain's got problems, but they're not even in the same ballpark as Greece. Do you Ireland. agree? Yeah, I think Spain's got the same kind of unemployment, but the budget deficits and um, the, uh, the other structural too. issues aren't, aren't as, as bad as Greece. Greece, everything is just terrible. I mean, they've been in recession for five years. Th they can't produce themselves out. They can't grow no out uh, to pay their debt back. It's, it's just all horrible. They need, they need the rest of Europe to sort Why are these 10-year bond yields in both of those territories kicking ever higher? I think the market's, as we said earlier, on the market's playing, playing chicken. chicken yeah. with the, the market's playing chicken on this one. The market's playing chicken for sure, and yeah. uh, and we've seen that Europe and the European authorities only act when the markets when the market are really dire, it. and and that really forces their the hand into making these decisions. But also, you know, in Spain, for example, Europe's going to come and they're going to sort out the banks for the for the first part. Yeah. But then those European bonds are, are going to have a higher rating than the Spanish bonds, so Spanish bond yields have to trade at a higher yield. We've obviously been focusing on equities. Now, beyond equities, is there anything else? That is there else? any other life? <laughs> is there any? That's exactly. Thanks for phrasing the question correctly. Is there any other life beyond equities? Well, I think interest rates are going to stay low for some time. So by some time, I mean probably well into towards the end of next year. And from that point of view, I think your bonds, you could probably look to them for their running yield and earn 7 8% 
Okay, the risk is that yields kick up at some point and, and then you make a capital loss. So they're riskier. Cash, you're earning less than inflation. Uh, and then you no still life, need to be no taxed on there. that. So, yeah, exactly, no yeah. life So you're sitting in the cash where you're waiting for your equity opportunities. So I still like the listed, uh, the preference shares uh, as an income source, a bit of capital volatility you need to live with as well. Um, any and property, I think the property, any property? The, the listed, listed property, property stocks are also yeah. going to give you that. They've got a growing income distribution. It's that smaller than it used to be, but 6 7% um, growth in distribution. And, and if bond yields stay low for longer, the property yields are going to stay low for longer and keep the prices up too.